Crystal. Crystal Cave. Welcome to Crystal Cave. Dad, take a picture. Can I have your phone? Yeah, here you go. Oh, wow. You take a video, it gets really close and you can see the detail. Wow, look. So cool, right? walked down into this area, felt the cooler temperatures, and decided to try to put their crops down here to make it like a refrigeration system. That sounds like it would make a lot of sense, but it actually had the opposite effect. That's because, like I mentioned earlier, all these rocks here form from water, so the cave is very wet and humid. Those crops actually spoiled faster than they would have if they would have just left them on the surface. Some people, though, like a mushroom. And over here we have some cave bacon. Oh, bacon? Wow. So what this actually is, is another form of flowstone like we saw on the wall of the first area. And it forms with these lines through it because of the angle that it's growing on. Wow, this is so awesome. When the stroller tried to wash all the dirt and mud off of these crystals with water, the crystals themselves actually dissolved along with it. Now, if you didn't know this, diamond is not soluble in water. What is is calcite. So these are six-sided calcite crystals that are only worth about as much as common table salt's constant water source. So this is a diamond formation. You can see it looks a lot different from the upside-down ice cream cone we saw earlier. It looks pretty discolored and looks pretty dry as well. You also may have noticed another side pathway over here. This one is called Devil's Den. There's a 60 foot initial drop if you were to go down there. It also used to be where our brown bat population used to live in the cave before white nose syndrome could come out. If you don't know what that is, it's basically a disease that affected their echolocation abilities. So what it specifically did is it woke them up in the middle of either hibernation. So when they left the cave, it was either, or it was winter time, so they either starved or froze to death. It's pretty sad what happened to our bats in the cave. But luckily, the brown bat population is rising in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Hey, if there were to be a 6.5 earthquake on the Richter scale, this room would collapse immediately. Now, luckily, those kind of earthquakes are pretty rare, only happen every couple thousand years. Just in case, though, we are moving on to the next area. What do you think? Do you like this, buddy? It's cool, right? Let me see. I need a reading. You got a reading? I got a tiny yeah. yep. I guess you can touch it, right? I love it. You also may have noticed this slack, this slack mic here, so we cut down. This was not going to see for reasons though. It's actually from the original owner of the cave, Samuel Fuller. While he was dying, he asked his teenage son to sneak into the cave and cut down the interlagmite from his tombstone. This is probably about the same size as the one right next to it, if not even larger. And if you were to visit his gravesite today, this one would have it down to about the size of your thumbnail. That's due to all the outdoor weather conditions that don't exist here in the cave that will be right down these stocks like potato to grow. This is a formation is actually so rare that there's only two in the entire country. One obviously being here and the other one in Carlsbad Caverns, New Mexico. That's it. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you get a drop on your head, you get one year of good luck. If you get a drop on your nose, you get five years of good luck. If you get a drop anywhere else on your body, you get a free shower from the cave. Wow. If you go with the lion's tail earlier, all the way over here, we have Neil the lion. Right there's the cave, here's the cave. Can you see, oh, you see the names? Look, you can see them on the phone really good. You see? Smiles, big smiles. Hug your brother. All right. <laughs> Looking I don't, good, guys. I don't think you'll like it. <laughs>